Hey guys, it's... I asked you if I could wear my hat <laughs> too because I had planned to wear it and you said it was fine and now he calls us nerds. <laughs> Hey guys, it's your best boxing friends. I'm Kelsey. This is Rachel. Rachel, an incredible, I think I found my podcast, first of all. Okay. Chris Mannix has a podcast, yeah. SI Boxing Podcast. And I listened to this thing. It had Bill Wanger, who is one of the uh, top executives at Fox, it's point, of pers point person for PBC, who they work with, to decide mm -hmm. what fights to wear, etc. Man, Chris Mannix is a journalist. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, like, I've listened to podcasts. I'm not a big podcaster person, first of all. But um, I try to give my attention to people that I can learn from. And definitely, this guy, first of all, credit to Bill Wanger for coming on here. Um, because Mannix is going to ask you the hard questions. <laughs> and it's going to make you uncomfortable. And he's going to he's gonna keep asking you things about stuff. He's not, and he, but he doesn't do it. I've seen people do this in a way that's unprofessional. But this is... This is, I don't know. I didn't go to journalism school, but I'm sure Chris Mannix did just after listening to him talk to this guy. Yeah, there's a way of like asking questions about something where you are truly like open to like truth, right? Yeah. And you want to get to the bottom yeah. of something and uncover all the facts. And sometimes to do that, you have to ask like hard questions. Be like, well, you know. Yeah, and challenge answers. So yeah. then just. Because you don't want things to just like, you know, people get stuck in their their worldviews and their boxes. Um, and I just listened to a podcast the other day with two people and I was like, this was a giant waste of my time because you are two people who like are just like saying your Parody. opinions and you have Parody. nothing yeah. to back up what you're saying. Yeah. Um, so it sounds like Chris Mannix like does a good job. Yeah, in, I was super excited. Yeah, and it wasn't some podcast or this podcast is three hours long. I ain't got three hours for you, podcaster. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going three hours for me. Um, but, so anyway, I'm going to leave a, sh a link in the show notes to this particular episode and encourage you to subscribe. I'm going to. I really think I found my podcast. Now, one of the troubling things that Mannix got to in this podcast mm -hmm. with Mr. Wenger is this. PBC has a good idea. You know what? There's too many belts in boxing. We are going to create our own PBC belt. He said, think about this. Let's imagine... Andy Ruiz beats Anthony Joshua again. Comes back over, because Andy Ruiz is an El Hamish managed, managed fighter. He's a BBC fighter. Comes back. Deontay Wilder versus Andy Ruiz for the PBC heavyweight title. Rachel, do you love that or hate that? I'm not a fan. But why? So, I don't think that PBC has enough clout or control, whatever it is in boxing, to warrant this. So... I think I'm all for, you know, like the NFL used to be like different leagues, you know, it wasn't always the NFL. The AFC was a completely different league. Yeah. And I believe baseball was the same way, right? Uh, which is why the pitcher batting or not batting is a holdover from like those different leagues. Uh, I don't know if that's true. Something that's happened <laughs> in sports before, so you are correct. But like, so so things can progress over time, and if things were to progress over time with boxing, I think there's a lot of good that can come over boxing being underneath like a, a single umbrella. I don't think that the PBC right now has enough um, control of of boxing to do that. Mm. I think that that if they if they do this, then you are just part of the problem, which is there's belts everywhere. And yeah, as a boxing fan, as like a non-casual, like I don't know what you want to call it, like a legit boxing She's fan. She's legit. She's real. I, I, I understand like when I'm watching a fight, like what it means. Because honestly, there's all kinds of fights. There's fights for like titles. But there's fights that aren't for titles or for throwaway titles or titles that don't really matter, but they're still important fights like in the landscape of boxing. Yeah. But you have to know boxing to know that. When we have people over and they don't know boxing, oh my gosh, that's when I realize how confusing. convoluted and confusing it is because they're like, oh, so he's the champion? And you're like, well... Not really. Yeah, it's, it's embarrassing. <laughs> Actually, this guy over here is champion. Oh, and maybe he doesn't have any belts. How about maybe, on, when know, the like, zone had the KSI Logan Paul uh, 
show and they had all these different people on there and they were trying to explain it to a new audience i was like Shh, <laughs> don't don't tell them about this yet you know this is something you hit them over with after they're already well, hooked because so. you, you need but like, yeah if you have a new audience <laughs> and this is what i've learned in my situations is if i have people over then i'm just going to reference um rankings either the ring or the t-burb and reference their rankings you like how i I didn't I mean, pause yeah, and do it, as I always do. Uh, I'm I just, just going to reference that, and we're not going to talk about belts. Mm -hmm. so I'm not going to talk about So you it. don't want more belts? No, I don't yeah. want more belts. In a way, yeah, it seems like the same old thing. It seems like you're going to, what? You're going to, your solution, just like when the IBO came along with their computerized rankings. This is all computers now, and we're a legit title belt, too. Okay, but what now? We have a fifth one, and some people recognize that. Does it really make sense to have a sixth one, a PBC one, controlled by a specific... Probably not. But, I will say this. In the long run, wouldn't boxing be better off? The sport of boxing, wouldn't it be better even for consumers, for fans? If it looked more like the UFC, if the PBC really could become... And I'm not talking, it's not going to happen next year or two years from now. But ten years from now, if Al Heyman was smart enough and brave enough and sharp enough to really pull it all off and have PBC being the premier boxing promotional entity in the world and have its own champions, we could finally, at long last, Rachel, rid ourselves of the plague of the alphabet organizations. And so, yeah, do I think it's going to be successful? I don't know. I think I would I would argue probably not just because other people have tried things similar. However, to me, it can't be any worse. What is the WBC doing with franchise champions? How many? I mean, what's going on out there? It's getting nuts. I'm for the risk. Let's do this thing and see no, how it works no, out. No, Here's the problem. The PBC is like all the other alphabet belts. I need somebody outside without a conflict of interest that can award champions. I don't need the PBC like having their fighters fight each other and keeping well, that all. But in you house. already have that kind of. I mean, you. you but you I don't need more of it. Yeah, I'm just like, saying already, that's a like we had the ring, right? And then we were like, hey, ring, you now you're a golden boy, and we don't like that. And so the T bird came out, and it gives balance to the ring. T bird's right? like, we don't even have belts. <laughs> And the deeper right, they refuse. They were like, they're not going to, because you don't want a conflict of interest there. And I really respect that. PBC just seems like another organization, like, like, and I don't know what the UFC does. I don't know how they award their champions, how they uh, uh, don't have that conflict of interest. Um, I mean, I guess if you're the only thing, game in yeah, town, I think what you not, want, but... what you want sounds idyllic, Rachel, but you know what Kelsey likes? Real world results. Okay. And I want something that will actually make boxing better. And so for me, you're not going to be chopped, PBC, for this. Do you do the <laughs> chopped thing? You guys watch chopped? Anyway, I think that, yeah, it could work out. And I'm for at least somebody. Somebody, please try something different. You know what? You could be different. You could be different by liking, commenting, and subscribing. <laughs> to Real Talk with Kelsey and Rachel. You know, sometimes we both wear the same hat. Sometimes that happens. You might wonder, what part of New York do you guys live in? And my fights are calm. And well, that's easy. We live near Houston. 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 Actually, ah, there's a Houston up there. I know. Ooh, See that? Where do we live? We sure you ain't guys gonna know, y'all. I learned about Houston from David Greisman. Yes. Fantastic boxing writer and Jeopardy, Jeopardy champion. Hmm? Who's done? Who's pulled off that double crown? Is there a triple crown that he could go for? We should... I'm sure that Greisman has a has a third accolade. Tell us. But is it worthy of being in the is. triple crown? If you know what David yeah, Greisman's third accolade sure. is, I'm or saying. if you have an idea, leave it in the sh in the comments. You can't leave it in the show notes. I'd have to give you my password. <laughs> We're not doing that. Hmm. Okay, we'll go. <laughs> We're done. Go okay. ahead and leave. Get out of here. Okay.